Gracious God, we thank you for our children, those here, those who sent the thing in the box, and the reminders of your love for us, calling us over and over again into your presence, where life and safety really is. Thank you for our children, and we ask you to bless our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the weather has been strange this year, and I think it's taken a toll on some of the trees. Many of my favorites are looking rather thin. Even though the leaves haven't fallen yet, you can see through those trees. There aren't as many leaves. There are other trees, different ones that are thriving, and I've never seen so many hickory nuts or acorns on the ground. And it's easier to see the future for those trees than some of the others that usually treat our eyes to so many colors in autumn. We have forgotten maybe that they've already dropped their seeds in spring. I fully expect that the trees with thinner foliage will make a recovery next year. Things happen, don't they? But trees are resilient. I believe that we are too. Much of a tree's health is determined by what goes on underground, doesn't it? In their roots. We experience resurrection and new life when we are connected to our roots. It's not autumn yet, is it? But it's close. And it's a good time for a service to honor those we have lost and all the things that have thinned our leaves in the last 18 months or so. Fall reminds us that life seems to die or go to sleep. And when the midst of winter comes, it can be difficult to remember spring is on its way. Today is the day we have set aside, especially to remember those that we've lost during the last 18 months or so. Some of them are here with us in photo form. COVID took some of them. Others died from illness, accident, and they are all losses. Some losses have been greeted with relief, others with anger and disbelief and everything in between. And there have been other losses as well. There have been many of us who did not see family when we wanted or needed to. Trips were canceled. Internal equilibrium was set into a whirlwind for too many. Others grieved the loss of normal ways in which they assessed their worth. Some lost jobs, income, friends, other things. And losses need to be grieved. And yet, we are very good at denial. We deny our sin quite easily, and we often give short change to our pain. We associate it with weakness, set it aside, pretend it doesn't exist. Bible quiz, shortest verse in the, verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Our service today is a bit different from our normal Sunday mornings. It is taken from the burial rite, which we use at funerals. And funeral services are Easter services. We honor our grief and look to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is in the resurrection that Christians find context and hope in our grief. This is especially true with the loss of and losses of those we love. And here's how the Book of Common Prayer describes it. The liturgy for the dead is an Easter liturgy. It finds all meaning in the resurrection. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we too shall be raised. The liturgy, therefore, is characterized by joy in the certainty that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, 
nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. This joy, however, does not make human grief unchristian. The very love we have for each other in Christ brings deep sorrow when we are parted by death. Jesus himself wept at the grave of his friend. So while we rejoice that the one we love has entered into the nearer presence of our Lord, we sorrow in sympathy with those who mourn. You may have heard the word closure. This is when we end or, or finish something. And when it comes to loss, I liken it to saying goodbye. We need our goodbyes. We often avoid our goodbyes, but we need our goodbyes. And COVID has made many of them difficult. We still need them and the context to experience them. Our gospel lesson today is probably the text most often chosen for a funeral because it gives us a clear picture of our context. Jesus is at the Last Supper with his friends. He is close to the time when he will go to the cross. It is also when he offers the most comfort. Do not be afraid, he tells his friends. Believe. Believe in God. Believe in me. I am the way. The present is difficult, but the future is secure. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't let it get too deep. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Words from Jesus himself. A similar message is given in our second lesson. It's a picture of the last day when Christ has completed the work of making everything new. And there's a great multitude robed in white. Hey, maybe that's why we do it, huh? And they're shouting, salvation belongs to our God and to the Lamb. And then we learn that they are followers of Jesus who have come out of the great ordeal, probably referring to this life. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun won't burn them. Mosquitoes won't bite them. And Jesus will guide them to the water of life. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The response of God to our thin leaves, to our weary hearts, our teary eyes, to our frustrations and impatience, to our depression and despair, to our confusion and even to our gratefulness is found in God's very character. God's property is always to have mercy. God is kind. God is patient. God hears our pain and is moved. God wipes tears. God sent Jesus to be born one of us. Jesus suffered and was killed. And he rose from the dead. He completed the work ascending to God's right hand and our place is secure. Christians have a root and it is Jesus. Nourishment in a time of drought is found in our root. Hope for our recovery is found in Jesus. He sends healing for our wounds and grief. He offers extra grace for us to practice patience. He reminds us of our weakness to help us forgive. He gives courage so we can seek wisdom. He provides balm for hurting hearts. On this Requiem Sunday, we can look bravely at our losses we are connected to the root. We can offer up our grief to the Lord 
for he has conquered death itself. Death does not define us. Life does. Life given to us in creation by God and life anew in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's been our tradition during this time um, after the sermon that we have a little chat, but we decided we're not really going to do it that way today um, because you all get to hear us, but we rarely get to hear from you. And so scattered around in the pews, if you're in one of those pews that has like white dots on it, there should be little scraps of paper and pens. And we want to invite you as, as a way of responding to, to what Father Ralph is inviting us to do, to, to set before God these things that we've been uprooted from, the things that we've lost, the people that we've lost, if there are names of people that are not pictured up here, um, to write those things down on those scraps of paper. Um, like, what are some things that you have been separated from, distanced from, things that you've lost, things that you've had to say goodbye to? Um, Maybe it's a person, maybe it's time, maybe it's an event. Um, but as a way of inviting that healing presence of God to write those things down. Then later in the service, when you come up for communion, to place them in this tray here as a way of offering that back to God. Um, as a, a gesture of healing even, to invite God's presence. They, they will not be read out loud, but they will be offered up to God. And in a moment, we're going to stop and have some, some quiet time for you to do that. If there are no slips of paper near you, raise your hand and Mr. Rebeccas will find some and bring them to you. Because he's that kind of guy. Yes. So, as the Spirit leads, if you'd like to write something down on that paper, I invite you to do that. And when you come forward for communion, Place it in the offering plate right there in the center and then receive communion. And then at the end, we will commend um, our hearts, our thoughts, our losses to God. So take a few moments of quiet, pray. If you are led to write something down, do that. And then we invite you during communion to bring them forward. 